Hey, so this week we're going to talk about something that I get asked about all the time, and that is my materials. I would say that my materials are definitely what I spend the most amount of time on when I'm developing a new project. I draw a lot of inspiration from creators who use Redshift regularly, and I feel like that is very reflected in my work. I really like the way that Redshift looks out of the box. That engine is super, super pretty and is full of capabilities. And honestly, I think that Cycles is very similar. So today we're gonna go over how to create this scene. However, the two other scenes that I've shown on my Twitter will be available on my Gumroad as well as on my Patreon. Also on my Patreon is an early version of my Glass 2.0 shader. You can see here, I've added a lot of extra options for customization. And I think that there's a lot of cool stuff going on here. It will be released for free eventually. Uh, it's just not done yet, but if you wanna play around with it and kind of test, you know, through the, the testing phase of me figuring things out, it is available on my Patreon. But with all the boring stuff out of the way, let's hop into Blender. And what I've done here is drop in one of my motion primitive shapes. Um, however, I did remesh this because I found that the topology on it was just a little bit weird. So whatever you use for remeshing, whether that's quad remesher or another add-on for me, I really like using the internal Cinema 4D remesher. I think that it's just one of the best things on the market. And since I already have it, I use it a lot. All we're really looking for is evenness in the topology, like the, the face layout and for everything to be quads. And yeah, so whatever you use to get that look. All right, so first things first, let's go ahead and get the kind of shape going for our projection of that purple material. We're gonna start off with a Voronoi texture and we are going to have a wave texture plugged into that. We're gonna go our color into our vector and then we're gonna grab these, slide them back a little bit and drop in a color ramp and then drop our color into our factor and our color into our base color of our principal BSDF. Now you can see that already kind of gives us an interesting texture. And if you're not seeing this, then that's probably because your object isn't UV'd. There are a couple ways around that. You can go into edit mode and select all, press U and then smart UV project. Or if you know how to unwrap, you can go in and make your seams, unwrap that way. You could also set this up with a mapping node and a texture coordinate node and then have it set to something like generated. And that will give you a slightly different effect, but also similar. However cool this texture may be, it's not really what we're looking for right now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through and adjust some settings on our textures. Let's start with our wave texture. We're gonna start with negative 0.3 and then negative 1.3. And you can see that this separates up our wave texture tremendously. We're gonna set our detail to 25 and our detail scale to negative 35. And as soon as we set that detail scale, you can see that we've got this really cool distortion fact happening. We're gonna slide over to our Voronoi texture and we are going to change this to 21. And I really like the way that this turns out like this, but I think it's a little bit too much. So we're gonna play with our color ramp. I think we're gonna swap these colors around and come up to where something maybe like this, so that we've got these really dark values, but also these really light values, and that'll help us later for sure. But for our base material, you can see that we're seeing uh, surprisingly little purple, and that is because it all comes out in our subsurf values. Now you guys know me by now, I love subsurf. I put it on everything that I can because it's cool. So we're gonna crank this up until we're about a third of the way in. And you can see we have our purple here and that's because I've already done this because I screwed up recording, but drop down your subsurface radios and plug in these values here. You've got one, one and 2.9. And that gives us the ability to reflect back purple where there is a black value. You can play around with that and change the colors if you want. But if you're looking for the exact thing that I did, that's how I did it. So now that we have our base set up, I wanna work on these little sparkles that we have in our object here and how we're gonna get those is with a mat and this is surprisingly easy to do and it adds a lot of detail to your render so what we're going to do is we're going to switch over to material mode for now and we're going to disconnect these and i'm actually just going to kind of move them out of the way for now and we are going to spawn ourselves in a musgrave texture and another Voronoi texture we're going to plug our height into our vector. And then from there, we're gonna plug our color into a color ramp. And let's go ahead and use the Node Wrangler add-on to see what this looks like as of right now. And you can see this looks nothing like speckles, but if we increase our Musgrave texture, we do start to get somewhere. But there's a little bit too much of the Voronoi in here. So let's drop that down. There we go. We set it to 1.2 and we're instantly where we should be. We've got these little speckles going on. However, we have too much gray value. And that is where our color ramp comes in because we're going to kind of want to clamp these so that we're primarily just black and white values. It is okay if there's a little bit of fall off here. The, the fall off means that there's just going to be blending of two textures later. So now that we have these two set up like this, we're gonna drop in a mix RGB 
and we are going to plug our top color ramp value into our top output and our bottom one into the bottom output and we are going to set our mix value to multiply and then turn the factor all the way to one and now if we check out what this looks like through our base color if we go into rendered view you can see that we have our subsurface kind of texture with all these little white speckles all over it so now these groupings here are actually super important because we're going to be using them to drive a lot of things this stuff up here is just our base texture we're really not going to do anything more with that for the rest of this but this is what we're going to continue to build on so from our color ramp here we have this the mat setup and i want to use this to drive our roughness values so that these little white speckles are shiny and how we're going to do that is by dropping in an invert node and then plugging our color into that and then this directly into our roughness and now it might be kind of hard to see but they are shiny so that we have the shine set up in our speckles i want to add uh, a height map so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate our color ramp. We're gonna reconnect our color. We're gonna drop in a bump node and we're gonna go color to height and then normal to normal, but we're gonna switch these colors around for this. We're gonna go maybe something like this. That's a little bit hard to see, but we still have some gray value in here and I want to get rid of that. I wanna make sure that we are solely black and white. So we're gonna bring those real close together. And now if we go back into our principled view, you can see that we have a little bit of like fake bump going on here. Just enough that I feel like when we're in rendered view, there's a little bit more separation between the two materials. Now, one more time, we're gonna duplicate this color ramp and we're gonna go color to factor. And then this time we're gonna plug it into our transmission. And this is what's finally gonna give us this super glassy look. Now right now, I feel like our speckles are a little bit too big. So maybe we can increase these a little bit, maybe add some more. I think we'll get closer to what I had uh, in the original image, maybe something like this. I, yeah, I kind of like that a little bit more. And from there, we pretty much have our base set up. Now I'm gonna do a little bit of organizing here and get everything situated how I want. And then I'm gonna come through and label everything so that I know where everything is going forward. With everything organized, I'm gonna go ahead and select everything, hit Control J, then hit F2, and I'm gonna name this base mat, just so we know that this is our base material. Everything in there is the purple with the speckles. So now for the time that comes with every tutorial, I've imported my glass shader which you can find for free on my gumroad or in my discord and that is because we are going to use this for the kind of swirly texture that is available on the rest of our image you can see we have the glass there going on with the reflections and stuff it looks real pretty i'm proud of my glass shader i gotta show it off all the time so the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to just hook up our base glass shader here and we can see that we have some settings going on that are outputting to a I mean, a good looking glass, but I want it to be a purple, very refractive glass. Um, so we are going to switch all of our colors over here. We're going to go up to the red and we're going to go into our pink, maybe not full hot pink, but maybe something like this. And you can see we've already got a lot of purple going on. And we're going to come into our green because the green is still affecting it a little bit too much, pushing it into that like light white value. And we're going to slide it over till we're more in our blues. I think we can even go further than that. Maybe to something like this is good. We're going to turn up our roughness just a tiny little baby amount not that a 0.125 not 125 <laughs> my bad and now let's start working on the mat for how we're going to mix this together let's start by spawning in a color ramp a musgrave texture and a noise texture once you have these all set up we're going to hook them up to a texture coordinate and a mapping node we're going to go color to vector and then height into factor. Now let's go ahead and check what the output is for this. And you can see that we've got a lot going on here and we don't want that much. So let's play around with our settings here. At first things first, we're gonna go to our noise texture because I think that's what's driving a lot of this. We're gonna go 3.2 and 1.4. These are the settings that I used on my original render and we're gonna turn our roughness up to one. We're also gonna come over to our Musgrave texture and we're gonna lower this just a little bit in our scale to 4.5. And then we're gonna leave everything else default. Much like before where we have this texture that we're gonna be using as a matte, we really don't want these gray colors in here because again, with black being a value of one and white being a value of zero or inverse, depending on how you're using it, that gray in the middle is gonna cause weird mixing and we don't want that for this. So we're gonna slide our color ramp up until we get a mixture that we like where we're getting rid of all of that gray. And now this might be too much. We're gonna see in a second, we're gonna drop ourselves in a mix shader. And we're gonna plug our glass material into the top value and our principal BSDF from earlier into the bottom value. And then we're gonna take our color ramps color output and plug that into the factor. And then this is what's gonna to go to our surface. 
And now I can tell you right now, this is kind of the opposite effect of what I'm looking for here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna play around with our color ramp. Already we know that our black texture is going to be our, our glass shader, and we don't want that much of our glass shader. We just want hints and highlights of it. So we might even just be able to flip this around and get away with it like this. Ooh, actually, I, I do really like that. I wasn't expecting to like that as much as I do. Um, I kind of want to move the black shader over just a little bit so we get a little bit more fade off between these two. Like I said, a little bit of gray is not going to kill it. It's just going to add a little bit of fade between the two. Something else that is cool about this is the way that we have this set up right now with our texture coordinate and our mapping coordinate, we can use our location, our rotation, and our scale kind of as seeds for the generation of our noise here. So if we play with any one of these values, you're gonna see that we can really move these around however we want. And there are basically infinite possibilities here uh, of playing around. So play with these until you find something where you're like, oh, okay, this is, this is the seed that I really like. All right, so these are the settings that I have landed on to get this material here. I really, really like this. Again, again, I kind of switched it up and I pushed away from what I just said I really liked and I went back closer to something more that was in the render. Um, but either way, I really, really like this texture. You get kind of like these incidental, like spacey kind of star things going on because of the transmission value in our speckles, which I think add a lot to this interior, kind of give it like a sci-fi kind of feeling. Hey, just gonna cut this in as I'm editing this video. I realized I made a mistake here. Um, this shader went through multiple versions and initially I made this mat to do this mat's job. Um, so this mat is not entirely uh, necessary. I didn't realize it at the beginning, but initially this mat ran to here and it does, it does basically the same thing. Anyways, not super important. You could definitely use this mat for other things, but I felt a little stupid when I was editing this and went, oh, wait a minute, you don't have to do this probably, but you know. You can, and you may find another use for it at the very least. Sorry. But yeah, that is basically it for the material. Remember, the other materials are available on my Gumroad and my Patreon. We're gonna go through a quick breakdown of the rest of the scene. I'm just gonna kind of walk you through the original project file though. Going through this relatively quickly, however, if you wanna break it all down on your own and go through it more slowly, this project file is available for free in my Discord. So let's start with our wrapped object here. And you can see that this is just a Bezier curve that I lined up with our backdrop to make sure that it was like a very similar curve. I put an array modifier on it and then I played with simple deform until I got something that I liked. Obviously I've already positioned this. It doesn't just like magically come to the right position, you know? Um, I, I played with my positional values here to make sure that it wrapped around our object. Here are the settings on the simple deform modifiers. And the material that is on our little wraparound object here is the same as the background. It is just a purple principal BSDF with a little bit of subsurf on it. And I changed the subsurf settings again to kind of reflect more of a white and purple uh, color output. Super simple stuff. Uh, again, I've got these spheres in here that I love putting in renders, which all this is is uh, in this case, I used icospheres and then I subdivided them, duplicated them, and I scaled them up. And then the outer layer that has been scaled up, I delete some faces on, and then I throw the subdiv back on it. And it creates these cool shapes that I think look super cool. Um, the only thing that is on them is a little bit of subsurf. Pretty much everything else on these materials stays exactly the same. They just look cool. The outer layer for our main object here, I just duplicated it. And in edit mode, I hit A to select everything. And then I scaled with Alt S so that I'm scaling along the verts like this. And once it was larger than the initial object, I came up here and I put a decimate modifier on it and then a wireframe modifier. And all that does is break up some of like the uniform of the wireframe. Without it, it looks like this. And then, you know, with it, it gives it like a little more like jagged sci-fi kind of feel. And I really liked the way that looked. And then I threw these little like, uh, like 90s, like anime stars in the background because when they're out of focus, I just thought it looked so cool. Just like a little stupid little thing you can throw in the background that gives the scene a little bit more life. And I really, really liked it. The lighting on this also is super basic. I have one light angled down that's fairly bright and I have one light angled up that's fairly bright. There's really not much complicated about the lighting setup in this. It just looks good. And sometimes you get lucky and it works out that way and the lighting setup just works. And alrighty, that pretty much does it for us today. We've walked through this basic material here. Obviously, again, I know I'm really hammering it at home, but these other ones are available as well as the second version of my custom glass shader, at least in this testing phase, are on my Patreon and my Gumroad. And yeah, I, I'm super proud of this week's like uh, creation stuff. 
I guess. Sorry for lack of intelligent words, but uh, I really had fun this week making this stuff. I genuinely was looking forward to it after work every day. And that's super cool. I, I love having that feeling. Thank you so much for watching this video. And thank you to my patrons as always for allowing me to do this and making it possible. You know, you guys helped me. You guys bought my groceries last week. That's sick. That's it's very helpful and very cool. And I really appreciate it. So thank you so much for all the support and the love lately. It really does mean a lot. And yeah, I will see you guys again really, really soon.